whatever kind of creative you are, whether you're a writer, an animator, a musician, maybe a game designer, whatever it is, I'll bet you know this feeling of not being able to get the kind of result you're after. You know what it is that you want to go for. You have a clear view of what it needs to play like or sound like or look like or whatever. But somehow, you just can't make it happen. You get lost in your own head. You make silly mistakes. You beat yourself up over it. And uh, something that was supposed to be fun and simple maybe just gets weird and tangled up and, and takes forever. So what do you do in a situation like this? Well, I don't know what you do, but I know what I used to do back in the days, which is basically do more of what I've always done. Work more hours, maybe way more hours, uh, and just try and make it work somehow. And even if it doesn't come out as well as I wanted it, you know, as, as good as the thing that I, had, that I had in mind, well, you know, hopefully next time, right? But I would also get worried that I might not be good, at no, good enough at this, you know? So I would go and watch more tutorials, get another book, you know, maybe buy an expensive piece of equipment that I convinced myself was the, the thing that would solve all of my problems, right? But then at one point at my career about 15 years ago, I finally realized that I was just looking at the wrong place the whole time. And if any of this sounds familiar to you at all, you might be looking at the wrong place as well. So in this video, I want to share with you a different kind of solution, a workflow solution. It's a set of concepts and tools that I've been developing and using for many years that solve a surprisingly wide range of creative problems, from working faster to better teamwork, from getting rid of creative anxiety to selling an idea to a client successfully, from fighting crippling perfectionism to thinking outside the box and coming up with better concepts and ideas. Now, this video is going to give you a good overview. It's not going to give you all the answers. I can't do that in a 10 to 15 minutes video. But if you do like the kind of solutions I'm offering here, then uh, I think it would be a good idea for you to follow this channel because I'll be posting my entire workflow method, the full thing, right here for free with a new video just like this one coming out every week. All right? So. Without further ado, let's begin by talking about the bucket and the pipeline. So I want you to imagine your talent, your artistic skills, your professional knowledge, in other words, everything you know and are capable of doing as a bucket of water. These are your resources, this is what you have to give. The bigger your bucket, the more water you have in it, the higher the level of quality that you're going to achieve, right? Well, not exactly. For simple creative work that you do by yourself in a couple of hours maybe, yes, the size of the bucket is really all that matters. For bigger projects, the story gets more complicated. For a project that's going to take days or weeks or even months, maybe with some teamwork involved as well, you have to imagine that the water from the bucket need to travel pretty far over a long time. All of a sudden, the most important and difficult thing that you need to worry about is not so much the amount of water in the bucket, but the quality of your pipeline. If your pipeline is full of holes and it's leaking like crazy and it has all these dead ends, and your project is long and complicated, you can have a huge bucket of skills and talent and knowledge and experience and still end up with nothing on the other end. Does that make sense to you? And I really think that's a great metaphor for what many artists experience in their creative career. They work so hard for so many years on getting a bigger bucket and filling it with more and more water, but it doesn't really help because what they don't realize is that it's the pipeline that they need to fix. This pipeline is what I call the creative process. And if you manage to build yourself a really, really good one, the amount of water in your bucket won't be much of an issue anymore, or at least it would be a lot less important. I know this for a fact because I have spent some serious effort building myself a good process, and I know the kind of results that it creates. So far, I've personally used it in animation, writing, sculpting, illustration, modeling, composing music, developing apps, designing websites, character design, and several other things. I've used it as a freelancer, an independent creative, as a teacher, and also in designing complex production pipelines for dozens of people working together for several months. So I'm not saying my universal creative process is the only one that works, 
I'm just saying this one definitely does work. In the next two lessons, I'll explain about the five elements of the process and how they all work together. When I was a kid, there was this famous TV series I used to watch called The A-Team. If you don't know it, it was about a group of four guys, each with a unique personality and a specific set of skills. Hannibal was the man with a plan and a master of disguise. B.A. was a hot-headed muscle man and an excellent driver. Face was a con artist with a soft spot for pretty girls. And Murdoch was the barking mad pilot who could fly anything. And of course, every mission these guys had somehow required most of these skills. I was reminded of this TV series because in fact, every creative effort is a bit like an A-Team episode. It requires four different mindsets, four distinct personalities with different skills and attitudes. So I want you to meet your personal creative dream team. The dreamer, the explorer, the maker and the pro. The dreamer creates ideas. He is playful, inventive and unpredictable. He has the superpower of starting with nothing at all and ending up with something, a concept for the work. The explorer is driven by curiosity. He doesn't invent, he discovers. He likes to learn, to practice, to experiment. His role is to take the raw concept, gather information, dissect it, look deep into it, solve the difficult problems and end up with a fully developed vision. The maker puts stuff together. He's a builder. He can improvise but he doesn't invent anything or take big decisions. His role is to start with a rough shape and then slowly build it up and develop it and shape it into the vision. Last but not least, the pro. The pro is an organizer. He likes keeping track, looking at the big picture and being in control. His job is to know who needs to do what when for the process to run smoothly and end on time. Okay? So with that in mind, here are the two secrets for a smooth and successful creative process. One which is pretty obvious, you should strive for each of your personas to be really good at what he or she does. And two, which is less obvious but a lot more crucial, is that at any given moment only one of them should be in control. You see, years of studying and observing the process have convinced me that most of the problems creatives tend to experience is the result of these personas trying to work at the same time and interfering with each other. So for example, you start a project the dreamer starts thinking of ideas, but then as soon as he comes up with something, the maker jumps in, starts creating it. But then the explorer wants to test some different options, so they fight for that, and then suddenly the dreamer comes back with a better idea, and he wants to change course. And the pro is yelling at everyone, saying there's no time, and we're going to miss the deadline, which is exactly what happens. Does that sound familiar at all? See, this is the kind of process that creates the confusion and frustration we've all experienced at one point or another. And the solution, again, is to get really good at working with just one persona at a time. To almost feel like you're changing costumes and switching personalities, like an actor. And that way you can start getting to know these four personas individually, what each of them is good at, what needs to be worked on, what situations tend to trip them up, and so on. It's a really great tool for analyzing and improving your process. So we've talked about four of the five elements, dream, explore, make and pro. The fifth element is not another persona, but a skill. The one skill that really matters, in terms of process at least. What I'm talking about is the skill of capturing the essence of a thought or an impression or idea very quickly, very roughly, but clearly. And this capturing thing happens all over the process. You use captures to dream up ideas, to explore possibilities, and even in the make phase when you gradually develop your final work. Because in the end, what is a creative project if not a very complex structure of captured thoughts and impressions and ideas? Doesn't it make sense? So a typical project includes hundreds or even thousands of captures, and every small improvement in your capturing ability gets multiplied over and over and over again throughout your work. So what does that mean? It means that investing your time practicing your capturing skill, building it up, is probably the best investment you can make if you want to get better at what you do, at anything. I'm a big believer in learning through doing. You watched this video, I hope you found it interesting and helpful, you now have the information. But when you take action, when you use it somehow, you get to fuse this information with your specific personality, your specific needs and your work. And that's a whole different level 
of understanding something, right? So at the end of each one of these videos, I'm going to suggest an exercise or a specific action you can take to help you get to that next level of understanding. All right? So when you finished watching the video, here's something you could try. Step one, I want you to take a few minutes and think about your own workflow habits. And I want you to write a list of things you do to get from zero to the final work. What do you do when you need to come up with ideas? How do you develop those ideas? How do you solve problems? How do you avoid problems? What specific actions do you take to plan ahead and to track your progress? They don't have to be good habits, by the way. You can definitely add bad habits to your list, but do try to focus on the actions you take rather than the internal process. Okay, and listen, it doesn't have to be a long list, okay? And it doesn't have to be complete, doesn't have to be in order. Don't make a whole thing out of it. Just write a few things that you regularly do in your personal workflow. For example, let's say you're a sci-fi writer, okay? Your list could be something like this. Outlining with bullet points, developing characters through writing monologues, looking for concept art online to draw ideas from, bad habit, maybe you're, you're getting stuck on editing one sentence or a paragraph for way too long. For tracking your progress, maybe you're writing uh, with a wor word counter. And for focus, maybe you're turning off uh, the phone while you work, okay? So, cool, that would be a good list for our step number one. Step number two, I want you to go through the list and try to identify where each habit fits in the workflow I just described. And you can even color code it to make it more fun. So taking the same example, outlining with bullet points would be a form of a capture. Developing characters through writing monologues, that would be part of the explorer slash vision process. Looking for concept art online to draw ideas from, that's obviously a dreamer slash concept uh, part. Getting stuck on one sentence for too long, that would be part of the make slash production. And uh, finally, tracking uh, with the word counter and also turning off your phone while you work that, both of those would be a pro persona slash plan uh, process. Okay, so that's the exercise. Keep it short and simple. Uh, we're just starting out here, okay? So if it takes you more than 10 minutes, you're definitely doing it wrong, okay? Just take it easy. Thanks for watching. Always check the description for more information, additional resources, and for information on what's coming up next. And if you like this approach, if you think it's helpful, like and subscribe, my friend. And I'll see you next time.